Can everyone see? Yeah, I can see it. Great, and you can see my uh, cursor? Yes. All right, awesome. Did you switch the recording off? Sorry? No, it's on, it's on. Uh, okay, so, uh, oops, time here. I, yeah, so I'm uh, Hart Goldman. Uh, today I'm gonna tell you about uh, some new work on uh, exploring the landscape of non-abelian quantum Hall phases that are accessible from abelian parent states using a composite particle framework uh, in code and duality. So this talk is going to be based on uh, three papers, although primarily this first one here um, on the example of Fibonacci topological order, which I'll, uh, which I'll define a bit, uh, as well as a couple of earlier papers on uh, uh, describing new types of quantum phase transitions between abelian and non-abelian states and an earlier one on reed uh, And This is with collaborators, uh, Roman Sohal, uh, who's at UIUC, with moving to Princeton, and uh, our uh, mutual advisor, uh, Eduardo. So uh, to give a little bit of context, although uh, it's a bit redundant uh, given this uh, given this conference, uh, one of the really most amazing achievements of the past several decades is an understanding of the abelian fractional Hall effect, and in particular, the uh, development of a unifying framework in the form of uh, flux attachment, which uh, many speakers have already described in great detail, but um, basically we exchange uh, the original electrons for uh, composite fermions or composite bosons uh, coupled to churn simons gauge fields. And in the case of composite fermions, this allows us to capture the uh, Jane sequences of abelian fractional quantum Hall states that are observed in, uh, for example, gallium arsenide, uh, and condensates of composite bosons uh, can also give a dual representation for uh, hierarchies of quantum Hall phases. Now, another family of states uh, that we're all very interested in uh, are non-abelian quantum Hall phases which have quasi-particles that uh, rather than having ordinary exchange statistics by a phase uh, have non-abelian statistics. In other words, if I uh, braid two particles, the wave function is going to transform not by just a simple phase, but by some unitary transformation. And this is enabled by, uh, by additional degeneracy of uh, the excitation spectrum. So these types of states are conjectured in physical systems, of course, new equals five halves, which we've already heard a lot about, um, which is uh, thought to be the more read state of one of its cousins, uh, as well as the new equals 12 fifth state, which is believed to be uh, the k equals three read reside state. Uh, and one of the motivating factors uh, for why people care about this, not just because of how exotic and interesting they are um, intrinsically, is that uh, non-abelian states have been proposed as platforms for, uh, for topological quantum computation. Now, unlike the abelian states, non-abelian states are significantly harder to capture um, with a unifying framework like composite particles. So while we understand very well their topological properties and wave functions, uh, things like that, uh, the dynamics that can give rise to non-abelian states are still shrouded in a lot of mystery. Uh, you know, a major exception to this, of course, is the uh, uh, Fafian or anti-Fafian or particle full Fafian states, uh, which arise from composite particle pairing. Uh, and that's something that uh, is really fairly unique to these states that we have a nice composite fermion picture for how they might arise. Uh, in the cases of other states, uh, which from a wave function point of view, rather than involving pairing, involve clustering of uh, more and more particles, uh, we don't have such a nice uh, composite particle picture. 
So uh, for read residing in block one, uh, you know, we have things like projective partons or wire constructions. But in these cases, the dynamics are somewhat opaque. In partons, we have to make major assumptions about confinement. In wire constructions, we have to have these very finely tuned uh, interactions between wires. And also the physics of the clustering is not really manifest in any of these procedures. So you know, the case of or read or something, the composite fermion pairing maps onto the physical intuition for the wave function. But in these other examples, uh, we don't really have a clean dynamical notion of uh, what clustering really means. Um, and uh, as I already said, a composite particle picture is really lacking for these states. Um, so we're going to make progress on this question using uh, non-abelian duality. There's going to be like a non-abelian generalization of flux attachment. Uh, and an advantage of this is that we're going to connect the dynamics of the abelian uh, composite particle degrees of freedom and some abelian parent state to dual non-abelian degrees of freedom uh, that for the purposes of this talk, we're going to call uh, composite vortices. As I already said, this generalizes flux attachment uh, to situations where rather than having a simple U1 gauge field, you now have composite particle degrees of freedom that are coupled to non abelian gauge fields. And using these non abelian variables, we'll be able to access a wide variety of non abelian states using ordinary abelian uh, quantum Hall states as a starting point. And this will let us generate new types of parent systems for a wide variety of non abelian states, which have some uh, grounding in uh, physical uh, situations. And this will more broadly help us to illuminate the broader landscape of non abelian states that are accessible from the dynamics of uh, abelian composite particles. Uh, also, a great advantage of this whole uh, this whole program is that the uh, types of dynamics we're going to talk about really mimic the clustering properties of the wave functions. So they really dovetail very nicely with all of the intuition that uh, we gain from wave functions. And in one case that I'm going to talk about today, we actually will be able to motivate a new wave function for a state that previously had not uh, had one known. Uh, that state being the uh, Fibonacci state of bosons at uh, nu equals two, which will be the example that I'll focus on in this talk. And we're going to find this state by clustering non-abelian composite vortices in a uh, tri-layer of bosonic fractional quantum Hall states. And this will ultimately give us a new quantum phase transition from the Halpern 221 state to the Fibonacci uh, state. And I should mention um, briefly now that when I talk about Fibonacci, I'm talking about something a little bit different from what uh, earlier speakers uh, have discussed. So oftentimes people use Fibonacci interchangeably with uh, the SU2 level three uh, reader's eye state, uh, which has more anions than just the Fibonacci anion. Uh, here, when I talk about Fibonacci, I'm talking about a phase which only has the Fibonacci anion. I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail in a second. Uh, also, anyone should feel free to interrupt me with uh, clarification questions, anything like that. I'm happy to answer them. And if it cuts the talk short, so be it. I'm much more happy to have a conversation than get through all the material. OK, uh, so what is this uh, non abelian duality business? So recently, a large family of dualities were proposed for theories of uh, Chern-Simons gauge fields coupled to gapless matter, which are sort of like generalizations of flux attachment. So schematically, I've written uh, one of these basic dualities here relating a U of n level k gauge theory. Uh, this is a notation for Chern-Simons gauge theory with gauge field uh, in U of n, the level k, coupled to a Wilson-Fisher boson being related to 
SUK level minus N with this plus one half here, just denoting the parity anomaly uh, plus a gapless Dirac fermion. And uh, in the language of this duality, uh, on one side, uh, if I think about the matter on one side of the duality, uh, that manifests as some non-local monopole object on the other side. Now, these phase diagrams, uh, the, well, one of the ways that we check this duality is that the phase diagrams actually match, uh, and this can be seen by ordinary level rank duality. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it's not uh, uh, too much of an issue. Uh, but basically, this is all you need to know is that this is just a statement that at the level of the topological field theory, a U of N level K transignments theory is the same as an SUK level minus N uh, transignments theory. And we can see that the phase diagrams of these theories are the same just by turning on uh, mass operators on either side. Say I condense the boson here, then I would turn on a mass with a particular sign on the other side and check that the topological orders are the same using this relationship. And uh, I should also mention that this uh, state of duality here contains ordinary flux attachments. So if I set n equals k equal to one, uh, this is actually a relativistic analog of flux attachment. Uh, and it leads to this uh, web of abelian dualities that uh, has received a lot of attention recently that I won't talk about very much in this talk. Now, for our purposes, our primary interest is going to be in a uh, special set of these dualities where you set k equal to one, but leave n to be arbitrary. So if I set k to one on the right-hand side here, SU1 is just trivial. So that means that the right-hand side is a free direct fermion and the dual theory then is U of n level one coupled to this Wilson-Fisher boson for any n. So this is a huge family of strongly interacting theories which are dual to a free fermion. And the philosophy that we're going to use is to apply essentially this duality and look for phases that are naturally accessible to these five fields. So sort of inverting this logic that I used on the previous slide saying, well, we can check the duality by studying the phase diagram. Now I'm going to take the duality as, uh, since God given and say, okay, well, the phase diagrams must match. So if I have some interesting phase that's accessible to the degrees of freedom on this non-abelian side, then that phase should also be accessible to the uh, abelian side as well, even though it might be obscure and involve uh, dynamics of some very non-local objects. And uh, this will enable us to uh, uncover non-abelian states hiding near uh, abelian fractional quantum Hall phases. In particular, we're gonna be looking at uh, multi-layer situations. Okay, so uh, the Fibonacci state uh, that we're going to target for this talk is a sort of a uh, simple example of how all of this framework uh, can be applied it consists of a single non-abelian anion tau uh, with a special fusion property here. Uh, one is the trivial anion. Uh, and I already mentioned that uh, this is this this is not the same as the SU two level three Friedrich's I state, which has additional anions as well. And from a uh, you know the perspective of the particular braiding procedures, uh, if I wanted to say build a uh, quantum computer out of this, in principle, other anions could pollute the braiding process. So. If, uh, the uh, if I have just a state that's purely Fibonacci, then in a sense computations are more uh, more protected. So that's one motivation for studying uh, the state. And I kind of I should have said this first, but uh, this state can uh, be a universal topological quantum computer. So uh, that's one of the reasons why people are quite interested in it. And uh, just to mention um, what the topological quantum field theory is associated with this that we're ultimately going to target, it's this thing 
G2 level one, G2 is this uh, exceptional Lie group. Uh, we're not really going to focus on it very much. Instead, we're going to use a dual representation in terms of U2, uh, which is U2 with this funny mixed Trent-Simons level here. So there's a non-abelian level, which is three, and an abelian level, which is one. This can be represented by this quotient here. Uh, it's not very important. This Z2 is a one-form symmetry. But uh, in terms of Trent-Simons theory, uh, sorry, there's a question. Yeah, sorry, this is not a, this has got no quantum Hall content, right? It's okay. neutral, right? And what's the value of the, of C, the, the central charge? It's chiral. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's chiral. Yeah, so the, um, actually, I forget off the top of my head what the formula for the central charge is from this, this mixed level here. But um, yeah, it should be, uh, so basically what the Z2 does is it mods out a bunch of, uh, uh, it, uh, whatever Wilson lines are, okay. uh, uh, have non-trivial braiding with some uh, line that I'm choosing to generate the Z2. Okay. Um, and so what, practically speaking, that does is it throws out uh, the spin one half uh, Wilson line in the SU2 level three cross. This is on central charge uh, larger than one, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I forget the formula off the top of my head, but yeah, that's right. I, okay. So again, this is the expression for the uh, TQFT. And this is the, ultimately, this is the thing that we're going to, to target. Now, related to all of this, there's a fundamental physics question that also motivates this whole uh, pursuit, which is how can we get a purely non-abelian state just from the dynamics of abelian composite particles? So this state is special because it only has this non-abelian anion, yet the starting phases that we're interested in have all of this abelian stuff. Um, so it's really interesting to see how you can do this type of quantum Hall uh, alchemy. Okay, so now for the actual uh, meat of what we're studying. So we're gonna take as our starting point, a tri-layer of nu equals two integer quantum Hall states that are near a nu equals two to one uh, plateau transition. So I'm going to say that I have a, the degrees of free along these layers are quote unquote Dirac electrons, um, capital Psi, and given by Lagrangian here, they're just free. Um, I should mention that all of this can be done using non-relativistic fermions as well. Um, I can take all of these dualities and deform them into a non-relativistic limit. All the results will be the same. Uh, really, the only reason I'm using this relativistic language is just for some compactness of notation. Um, but all of this, the, the relativisticness is not actually important for anything that I've said in this talk. Uh, now, what we're going to do with these direct electrons on each layer is use the duality uh, with these non-abelian bosonic uh, composite vortices uh, that I mentioned a couple of slides ago. Uh, the reason why we call them composite vortices is they're like non-abelian analogs of the Laughlin quasi-particles. So it's like I took the Laughlin quasi-particles and I used level rank duality and got these different objects. And uh, again, uh, this is justified because the phase diagrams match. Uh, if I turn on masses on either side uh, and compare them, what I see is that this works out because U of n level one is just trivial. It's this SU, quote unquote, SU1 theory, which is just a uh, integer quantum Hall state. This capital A is not dynamical. Um, okay. So now I'm going to use this duality and get this U2 level one theory plus bosons on each layer. Uh, and each layer is also going to have its own U2 gauge field. So the Lagrangian for 
this dual trilayer state is expressed here. And I'm going to have this coupling to the physical electromagnetic field um, associated with the uh, uh, vortices of uh, the little a field. In other words, the physical electric charges in this theory are the vortices of trace little a. And I'm going to choose the charge assignments here to be a little funny. So normally, you might think that we want to choose all these charges to be the same. In fact, since all these theories are decoupled, this is immaterial. Uh, I can just do a change of variables to flip one sign, uh, say the sign of A2 relative to the sign of A3. But it's going to be important for us in a second that this, uh, when we turn on interactions between the layers, that uh, we have this relative minus sign here. OK, so to access the non-abelian state, we're going to do this clustering of composite vortices between the layers. Um, and this is sort of like here a bosonic analog of exciton compensation, since I'm going to pair uh, charges of phi with poles of phi on uh, the adjacent layers. So the order parameter for this is phi dagger m phi n, which I'm going to say uh, is non zero. And, but I want to also tune into a phase where uh, the expectation value of phi n alone is zero. So the anions are not, sorry, the composite vortices are not individually condensing, but rather this pair object is condensing. Now, under gauge transformations uh, associated with each layer, this sigma order parameter here transforms like a bifundamental field, transforms under the uh, Dagger transformations on one layer and the undaggered transformations on the other. And uh, this means that this condensate breaks any gauge transformations which are different between the two layers. So it pins uh, U dagger M to UN and Higgs is any gauge field configurations uh, other than those for which A1 equals A2 equals A3. And if I look at what happens then to the churn simons gauge theory, I run the original slide where I set all these guys, or sorry, to the, on the previous slide where I set all these guys equal to each other, you see that the levels add up. And uh, this gives a uh, U2 level three theory, which is not Fibonacci, but we're uh, getting there. And I should say that uh, in one slide, you'll understand the color coding here. So there is a reason why. Uh, Two of these uh, lines are red and one is blue. OK, so uh, actually on that, on that point, I, the reason why we do this color coding, it has to do with this choice of sign on, uh, uh, from a couple of slides ago in the uh, vortex current. So, Remember that the vortices of little a2 had an opposite sign charge to those on one and three. So this means that when I do this condensation, sorry, I keep moving my mouse around because I'm moving around the uh, uh, tower of all of you guys. Uh, that so, sorry, I you get you have this mutual turn Simons term. And when you set A1 equals to A2 equals A3, you get this nice mutual turn Simons term with unit charge. If this sign had been positive, this would have been a uh, charge three uh, current, which uh, would not lead to the same type of topological order that we're interested in. So it's, it's really important that we have the, the unit charge. Uh, and that's why we have these color coded lines here to emphasize uh, the difference in charge between layer two and layer one and layer three. Um, we could have chosen all of these charges to be the same, by the way, and uh, then chosen the order parameter to be a little different such that we paired particles between layer two and three and one, and then do the particle hole pairing between one and three. Uh, and the way you interpret this physically 
is that, uh, remember I told you that the uh, char vortex charges for the Lulays are the physical electric charges. So this is telling you that the charge densities on layer one and layer three are pinned to the whole density on layer two. Uh, and this spontaneously breaks the layer exchange symmetry. Now, uh, we found this U2 level three theory for all by uh, clustering these composite vortices. How do we get Fibonacci? So Fibonacci state we just get from here by simply using ordinary flux attachment. So if we attach a single flux to this theory, it'll convert the starting charges to bosons from these uh, Dirac electrons that I started with and give me a Lagrangian which looks like this with a new statistical gauge field little b. When I integrate this out, I, I get exactly the Lagrangian, the U2 level 3, 1 Lagrangian that I stated a few slides ago. Uh, and the filling fraction, so I have been a little coy about what the filling fraction is uh, over the course of this talk. It's because of, when I do this condensation, the filling fraction changes, and when I do the flux attachment, the filling fraction changes again. But when all the dust settles, uh, uh, the filling fraction is equal to two. And what's really cool about these types of field theory approaches is that uh, you can actually locate the anion degrees of freedom in the operator spectrum of the bulk uh, using these composite vortex variables. So we can identify the Fibonacci anion tau as whatever operator is neutral and has spin one under the U2, which is just this bilinear uh, phi dagger T, uh, which is the generator of U2, uh, TA phi. Uh, okay. So uh, this flux attachment I just did is kind of ugly in the sense that it mixes layers. So it's not very transparent in what's happening at the level of this parent state. But uh, actually, we can instead do intralayer flux attachment uh, on each layer and uh, attach a positive flux to layers one and three to start out with, and a negative flux to layer two. And this gives you a new parent state where you have two bosonic Andrew quantum Hall states and a 2 2 1 state on the middle layer. Then using duality and the clustering, this gives you U2 level one comma minus one on layer one and layer three and U2 comma, or sorry, U2 level one comma three on layer two. Uh, and then you just do the clustering between these and uh, add up all these levels and you get that uh, the final outcome is U2 level three one. Uh, so you can see because of all the, the, the reason why I didn't just start with this is that uh, uh, tracing through all of these mixed abelian and non-abelian levels can be uh, uh, kind of opaque. And so uh, uh, it's a little bit more transparent if going uh, the direction that we did. But ultimately, what we have is a transition from a 2 to one topological order to this Fibonacci topological order. So, uh, sorry, can I just, can you just explain yeah. what was what does the uh, U two three level one three comma one is that a? I mean, it should be a K matrix after for for two of them. Is that is that a is that somehow representing a two by two K matrix? Um, actually, that's a really interesting um, question. So. Uh, I'm going to get to this in, in the next slide. So at the level of, um, uh, sorry, where is it? At the level of this theory, it doesn't look quite like a K-matrix. Um, I just have this uh, non-abelian theory and then uh, this abelian part, uh, which just has a different level um, where uh, basically what how this quotienting is working out is that uh, you're uh, enforcing quantization of the fluxes of trace of uh, little a. 
But actually, when uh, we are going to try to motivate a wave function for the state using this field theory construction, and there the relationship with 221 actually becomes really important. And that looks like a K matrix state. So it's actually, it's really funny. And at the level of the CFT, it looks, uh, it looks like it has the, the symmetry of 221. Uh, but I'll, I'll get there in, I think, like one slide. Uh, yeah, so uh, just to, but before I get there though, I just want to emphasize uh, that uh, we have this new quantum phase transition between 221 Halpern state and this sort of trilayer configuration and the Fibonacci state through uh, this composite vortex uh, clustering and it parallels the clustering intuition of uh, the wave functions. And Raman is going to talk a lot more about that in his talk on Friday you know, for more general states and how we get things like read reside and so on. Uh, sorry, okay. yeah. maybe, maybe a stupid question. Why is this uh, condensation happening at the same point? Why don't you condense first level one and two and layer one and two and then layer three? So why is it at the same point? Ah, um, that's simply for compactness of representation. I mean, in principle, so sorry, where's my slide here? Um, so you know, this order parameter is just some large matrix. So in principle, I could uh, tune through, by, by breaking some symmetry, I could tune through multiple transitions where I do this condensation one at a time. Uh, say I condense layer one and layer three uh, together first, and then do yeah. So so you have to enforce some additional bigger symmetry. Yeah. To 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 make it the same point. Okay. Yeah. 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 Other. Yeah. You're right. So otherwise, uh, yeah. Without the symmetry, then this looks like a, a multi-critical point, and you'll pass through some other uh, much less interesting topological orders. Uh, there's nothing as um, there's nothing as non-Amelian as Fibonacci as you pass through that. Okay, so going back to uh, Duncan's question. So unfortunately, because of time, I can't go through the uh, construction of the wave function in detail. Um, but actually, uh, we can use this field theory construction to motivate a wave function, which until this point hadn't actually been written down for the Fibonacci state. And uh, that wave function has both properties of uh, Z3 read resi and the sort of K matrix structure of the 221 state. Uh, it knows about that layer exchange symmetry. And at the end of the day, what you get, and this is sort of ugly because it's singular, but you get this uh, expression here where I have three n particles that I partition in, uh, in this way where two are the same coordinate and one is this W coordinate. Uh, and the numerator is this, uh, is just the read reside wave function for k equals three. And the denominator has this funny uh, polynomial structure. Now it's not totally clear at the level of this wave function, but it actually does have the layer exchange symmetry between Z and W. Probably should have written this as a symmetric combination of this wave function with the wave function exchanged between Z and W. But uh, uh, yeah, so th this is one of the sort of very cool aspects of this problem is that the uh, wave function that we ultimately land on uh, knows about the states on either side of the transition and knows about this K-matrix structure. Um, Duncan, does that answer your question? Um, okay, guess so. Yeah, fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so one, one of the things that we hope for, um, in addition to maybe someday being able to develop a wave function that isn't singular, 
um, is that uh, on regulating this divergence, this can be used to help motivate numerical searches for uh, Fibonacci state and candidate systems that are sort of motivated by these tri-layers uh, that I described. Okay, so just before I conclude, I, I wanna talk about some of the earlier work that we did um, on the landscape beyond Fibonacci, because this procedure really is not just limited to uh, Fibonacci, it uh, can be used to generate all manner of interesting uh, non-abelian states from abelian parent theories. Uh, and it is a broad organizing framework in the same spirit as uh, usual abelian flux attachment. Uh, so, uh, actually, before I get there, so in particular, we can use this types of uh, composite vortex compensation to construct, for example, Reber's eye, which Roman's going to talk about, uh, non abelian spin singlet states, uh, and other uh, non abelian states as well. Now, uh, we can also use a somewhat different path, where instead of using dualities with non abelian bosonic degrees of freedom, we look at non abelian composite fermions. That was a very, very interesting story, but it's much more complicated. That's uh, why I didn't talk about it here. If I had an hour, I would talk about it more. But uh, there's all kinds of interesting dynamical revelations that we found from this. In particular, uh, we found new strong coupling phase transitions between abelian and non-abelian states uh, in the language of these uh, fermionic degrees of freedom. They come from the fact that essentially the lowest Landau level and infrared limits don't commute. So something I didn't say out loud, I realized, is that these dualities that we're talking about are infrared dualities, they're identifications of the ground state. But actually, it turns out that uh, by sort of turning the dualities on their head, you can see interesting situations uh, where this IR limit, if taken before or after the lowest Landau level limit will give different states. Um, and this leads to uh, new types of quantum phase transitions that uh, we don't have Lagrangian descriptions for. They're probably first order, um, although if they were second order, it would be very interesting. Uh, and actually this approach also encompasses the fermionic analog of the Fibonacci state, but it's locked behind one of these non-Lagrangian uh, transitions. And we also developed a duality between pairing and part-time quote unquote approaches. So if I take non-abelian composite fermions and I fill Landau levels, all of the Jane approach and its avatars and uh, projective part-time constructions, we actually find within the framework of duality that this procedure is dual to composite fermion pairing in an abelian theory. It's a series of cases. Uh, this leads to new descriptions of the antifafian state uh, using topological order and others. And we also can do something similar to these multi-layer constructions for fermions uh, by doing exciton condensation of the uh, non-abelian composite fermions in a similar spirit to the type of approach that uh, Glenn laid out uh, in his talk yesterday uh, for the abelian uh, case. All right, so just to wrap up, uh, Non-abelian dualities, as I already said, can be used to shed light on the broader uh, non-abelian fractional quantum Hall landscape and generate new types of physical parent states for a wide range of exotic non-abelian phases uh, and motivate otherwise difficult to construct uh, wave functions that can be used in numerical searches. And all of this is encapsulated in this example of the Fibonacci state. And uh, one thing I want to point out is some future work uh, that we all think is very exciting uh, is that you can actually use non-abelian duality to make statements about geometric response. So normally you would think that this is very hard because uh, there's no simple mapping for say the stress tensor from one side of the duality to the other. But what we can do is when we have a non-abelian dual theory that can capture both abelian and non-abelian states, we can use this to fix the orbital spin of the non-abelian uh, degrees of freedom by just trying to derive the known results for the abelian states. And then this can be used uh, 
to predict uh, geometric response coefficients than in uh, non-abelian states because we've fixed the uh, coupling to geometry. So this, this is something that uh, is ongoing work and that we're uh, fairly excited about. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so thank you for the last talk. Uh, since we are one